Now, the Irish Congress of uh, Trade Unions has called uh, for a significant rise in uh, the minimum wage and a group of private sector unions connect the CWU, the FSU, SIP2 and Unite have come out to support that call. We can speak to Gareth Murphy, who is head of industrial relations and campaigns with the FSU. That's the Financial Services Union. Good morning to you, Gareth, and thank you indeed for joining us on the programme. I think my first question to you has to be about your members. I'm very surprised to think uh, that people working in uh, the financial services could be on minimum wage, are they? Um, so we actually represent, morning, uh, Michael, first of all, and thanks for having me. We actually represent um, workers across a range of sectors, banking sector, the financial services more generally, tech sector, and also more recently the video game sector as well. We have a group okay. of workers in Game Workers Unite um, who are members of financial services union. And actually, directly within our own sphere, um, uh, the minimum wage and living wage is most relevant to our games uh, members because where we collectively bargain as a union with the um, banks and a number of tech companies, we've collectively bargained entry rates of pay that are above the living wage. Uh, but this is much more a societal um, issue generally than just our sector. And that's why we're working with four or five other trade unions and Irish Congress of Unions because okay. overall we know approximately 20% um, of Irish workers are, are considered to be low wage um, and the living wage would effectively, uh, or, or making the living wage mandatory or statutory would effectively eradicate mm. uh, low wages. So it's a really positive thing and it's something that uh, would, would benefit society as a whole. So it's not just our direct members, yeah. although it is some of them. Are. No, fair enough. Uh, I take it it's still a good job to get a job in the bank and you wouldn't expect to be on minimum wage. Uh, but should people expect to be on minimum wage if they're in the gaming industry? I mean, they really have popular products and they don't come cheap. Um, no, I mean, th- there's no reason why um, the game sector shouldn't have the living wage as a floor. It is one of the most profitable sectors globally. Um, it's actually passed in terms of revenues and incomes, uh, the film industry and the music industry. Video games now is overwhelmingly the biggest entertainment sector mm. and highly profitable. And there's absolutely no reason why those employers in Ireland shouldn't be paying uh, the living wage to um, all of the workers. Uh, there's quite an uneven wage distribution within video games. So mm. some of the coders and developers, as, you, as you'd expect, are on good wages yeah. and fair play to them. Um, they, they, they do great work. But then some of the what are called QA testers, so quality assurance testers, so the people who play the games to make sure, you know, all the doors open and all the tricks work and they iron out all the bugs, they are often paid minimum wage or certainly below a uh, living wage, mm. but they perform a vital function that anyone who's a gamer knows. The frustration if something doesn't quite work, if there's mm. a glitch. So these guys iron out all those glitches. And, uh, and it's a skill. They, uh, I mean, It's an absolute skill, I'm, yeah. I'm sure there's people who think they're great gamers uh, but wouldn't uh, be able to do that job. Yeah. Uh, and obviously skills uh, should have a, a value. Michael at lmfm.ie The Michael Reed Show with Airgrid. Managing and developing the national electricity grid so that it's fit for our current needs and ready for our future ones.